welcome to the first uh, CNS Nightcap. Uh, we decided that we're going to talk about chat GPT. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Training Transformer. Um, and basically the question that we try to discuss today is what role text generating AI will play in teaching and in research. Now, um, the program came out, I think in November, 2022, and it did feel like a watershed moment in the march of artificial intelligence, but there's also plenty of skeptics out there. Now in the foreseeable future, and you've probably seen the adverts as well, uh, the system will probably become so good that they start charging money for it. And then the question is, what will happen next? Does that mean that we um, have to pay to make our text more reliable or give them a unique take again so we don't all sound the same given that we use the same uh, machinery? Um, but I guess we have to wait and see for that. It also raised a couple of alarms regarding ethics, uh, especially at universities when it comes to essay writing um, and generally student exams, um, because the idea is that this uh, text generating AI is so good that you can easily cheat on writing assignments. And we have seen that because ChatGPT actually passed the bar exam, the <laughs> medical exam in the US. So it's doing a pretty fine job. Um, on the other hand, it's easy to use. It's fun to try it. It can be used as a good sparing partner or as a language teacher. So this is just to set the scene. Um, and I'm going to join this crowd over there so we don't have an echo. And I look forward to our discussion. Thanks for being here. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Steph. I actually listed um, some stupid questions about ChatGPT and I saw that get us started. So you all tried it. Um, if ChatGPT wasn't free, like tomorrow, would you be ready to pay to get access to it? Just raise your hand if you'll be ready to pay. Not an expensive price, of course, but, you know, out of principle. I can't uh, just to, just to know, um, it's uh, they already released the subscription. Okay, so who's ready to pay tomorrow? Then? Um, but uh, it, they say for now that it's gonna stay free. Um, but of course you're gonna have a priority access with the subscription, and you're gonna have a, a bunch of additional features, or I don't know. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit uh difficult to connect uh seeing the popularity of it if you don't pay for it right now you pay to jump the queue right because most of the time exactly, you go yeah. online it's running at capacity yeah good yeah good, good good and then so for those of you who say you'll be ready to pay for it what will be uh including myself why would you pay for it what do you want to use it for that is so important in your life that you're ready to pay for it and what does it cost does anyone know no, no, I didn't look. Yeah, it's uh, about $20 a month. Wow! <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, I had the same reaction. For me, it's way too expensive. That's literally two Netflix. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's, like it's, it's, it's almost it's eight Spotify family. No, it's so, very expensive. I start, personally, I will pay for it because it is valuable when it comes to find a solution in something that you don't know, such as, for example, coding something new. Um, but it, also, it is also valuable when you write, like, for example, I'm, I'm writing a book at the moment with uh, uh, Steph, Valentina, and Leah. Um, when you want to write a paragraph about something, you ask ChatGPT, so you have this kind of, it's going to scheme the average knowledge about any kind of theme and you can first check that you do have the average knowledge about that thing so you don't miss some critical argument about whatever your question is uh, but also you can clearly see how you can go further and use it to see like oh this is where actually you're creating new knowledge based on to base compared to what is uh, known by everybody. But that That's is good. one of the limitations, right? It's great to skim information and get the the quick view of this is good, this is bad, but what it lacks is the synthesis and the depth of knowledge. 
Like basically, it but does the Google search page one and two, but it doesn't go any further. But I, I think I think actually it give you uh, so you don't never know whether what you write is dope or cheesy. <laughs> But I think it's really going to give you the limit between those two worlds. That's also where you can distinguish it from human intelligence in most cases. Absolutely, right? absolutely, um, and that that's where like it is absolutely true. When you start asking questions and you in the domain you expect, it kind of looks superficial. As in Chris, you asked what is a disconnectome, and we were quite uh, uh, surprised by the answer. First, because uh, ChatGPT knew what it was. <laughs> but second, I could see the mistakes that people can do about the disconnect term being repeated by chat. Um, so actually, um, I, I learned a little bit more about how uh, chat GPT works in the meantime. And uh, he's, uh, th the only purpose of the model is to complete a text. So it, with the interface, it looks like it answers our questions and our requests, but its only purpose, and the only way it's been trained uh, was to complete a text. So if you start a sentence, it, it's supposed to finish the sentence. But of course, if you ask a question, the logical uh, uh, following is the answer to that question. So to us, it looks like it's answering the question. But the problem is, um, it doesn't care if it's right or not. And what we did uh, when I asked about the disconnectum, um, it gave an answer that looked uh, uh, possible, but I don't think it knew the disconnectum because then I asked if it knew the disconnectum, if it heard of it, and it said no. Um, but because uh, the disconnectome, it contains connectome, uh, it made up an explanation with the word. Hey, at least it's honest. You ask it if it knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You asked ChatGPT to be honest? <laughs> well, I mean, you, you can also... Do you think there is some level of consciousness there? <laughs> no, but you... Uh, uh... It, like just you know like kind of query its database right or its knowledge right. base right. right right but you can also ask it to go deeper and deeper in various iterations so it will give you a superficial answer at first uh, and then you know. ask it to go deeper and you get more and more information no, uh, yeah. but just uh, the thing that chris told that uh, it doesn't care if it's wrong or right well but there is uh, as i understand there are Three steps. There were three steps uh, in creation of this model. One of them is the GPT that tries to tell which is the most probable word coming, uh, finishing the sentence. But the second part was the reward model that tells if this makes sense or not. So I think it still tells if it is correct or not because it was trained as a additional uh, reward with additional reward model that corrects you know, the if this thing makes sense or not. I actually want to jump in there because the training is an important part of it uh, in a sense that they try to make it a politically correct PC software. Um, yeah, yeah, because there was a person, there were people who were labeling uh, if it was correct or not and if it contained some violence ter uh, terrorist correct which, which was an article i think in the new york times if i'm yeah. not mistaken where they discussed the ethics of that because people had to go through gruesome content and label it as mm -hmm. not accurate um but also that introduced another bias um and someone recently asked it to I don't know, I think it was something about writing something good about Donald Trump, Trump. Trump and Biden. Yeah. Uh, and Jet GPT replied, oh, I can't do that. I was trained to be PC. Mm -hmm. And then they asked the same question and changed Trump for Biden and it wrote a whole <laughs> essay about it. <laughs> so there is a training bias in, in the software. But there are also a lot of limitations. Uh, you can You can make the model say anything you want uh, some people are actively trying to um, uh, get ChatGPT to do that, uh, and they called it. Um, so basically, they just give instructions to the model, and essentially, if you tell the model to role play, you can tell it to role play pretty much anything. 
So if you wanted to role play a, a violent uh, uh, AI or a racist AI, it's going to do it. You might need to trick it a little bit, but the safety uh, uh, made by the reinforcement training or learning uh, is so brittle that uh, it's super easy to to make it uh, say anything you want. And and they they showed it. It's on Twitter. They called it the they called it Dan for like um, do anything uh, now or something like that. Um, D A N. Um, I, I can find the link. So yeah, the reinforcement reinforcement learning is just very shallow, and you can trick the model super easily. And even and with this uh, uh, training, it's definitely not enough for it to say the truth all the time. Because also, when it doesn't know anything, its role is not to say. Sometimes it's gonna say I don't know, but sometimes it's just gonna make up something. And I tried, I tried a bunch of uh, uh, times, and, and it literally makes up uh, things about what you ask if it doesn't know. Um, so another question that people have asked: are, Can will you, on the long term, use Chat GPT instead of using Google to seek for information? Mm, no, because I like to have the different results laid out in front of me, and I like to filter that myself. I think. But are you doing that? You can ask, sorry. The first two pages, yeah. I mean the first two pages, but it's also pre-selected according to your browsing history or a bit. But I... you can also ask chat GPT for alternative explanations or an, mm -hmm. alter uh, an alternative it will give you one. So it's basically like Google, but it's just faster. So you don't have to scroll through everything and click on every link, but you just get it, um, what you ask for. Google is right with ChatGPT, you don't get the source. Sorry, Eva, can you say that again? Um, that I think with ChatGPT, you don't get the source, right? Because it doesn't index where it got the information from. So Correct. maybe mm -hmm. to get some knowledge, but um, if you're really trying to look into something, you're going to want to know where it's coming from. Yeah, yeah. so it feels like it will give uh, more or less the same weight to different let's say articles and it might happen that while analyzing one article you think that this article has higher quality than the other one and is maybe replicated with other papers so i feel like uh it might be complementary to judge a video but i don't think i can totally give up my own uh, way trying to analyze different papers and think which one is more relevant and uh, give weight to this paper more than the other one. That's that's what you do when you skim through your for your results for your hits by your own, right? So you mm -hmm. go oh, this yeah. from there and there. I like just have a preference for some than for others. Mm -hmm. Plus, you don't know if it's made up because if it doesn't know the answer, it will just like make up something which sounds good. Sometimes it does. It sounds convincible, and there are like even citations that are completely fake. But how do you know? Like, I think if I scan Google, I at least know, okay, that's a journal I trust, or that's like some random page. But that's because we train as like explorer in science to check our reference. But that's, we know that the general population doesn't do this in you know, general. So using chat GPT instead of Google might be, you know, a danger because the information might be biased through training sometimes good against racism, sometimes discutable, such as, you know, Trump versus Biden. Um, that's, you know, that's a potential. So I think asking the, the same question in different uh, languages gives you different answers, especially if it is a political question and uh, you see the difference depending on which language uh, you're asking uh, if so it is biased also a lot on that, I think. Oh, that's interesting. You can actually scheme general knowledge about different themes and try to infer from that. Um, and they can actually provide valuable information. Another, another worry is, is like, um, so we do see when you work as an editor, a lot of uh, uh, papers have been written by machines. We uh, can 
easily spot them today. But chat GPT may actually uh, push a lot a little further this uh, this trend. And uh, do you think it's fair that actually chat GPT write entire paragraphs of your introduction or discussion or your book? Or do you think it's it's a cheat? And if that's a cheat, how can we identify it in the future? Can we ask chat GPT to but there are already yeah. there are already AIs that can tell you whether the text that you see was written by an AI or not. So the same Start company that. released a new software tool to check if it was generated by ChatGPT. Um, and then the other thing that I would like to add to Mara's comment is where do we draw the line, right? So you use mm. Grammarly to help you improve your English, and sometimes Grammarly completely rewrites an entire sentence. It's still keeps some of the words you generated, but it still rewords a big chunk of what you wrote. So is that still acceptable? But then if you change five more words because you asked ChatGPT to write it, that's not acceptable anymore. Right, also like where I draw the line is like probably content. Ramali is not gonna give you new content, you know? If you have zero content and the text you put in, it's just a bunch of words, it's not going to give any sense to it. That's what the reviewers are. That's the job of the reviewers. We, we're not supposed to care about the style of the paper. I mean, of course, it's it can be comfortable more. Uh, you can appreciate when the style is great. But you clearly see when someone is not a native speaker, a native English speaker. Uh, you you see it in the style of the, of the paper, but that's not a reason why you would reject the paper. You'd be surprised, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you, well, <laughs> it's more often than you think. Uh, well, you know, communication of your of your results and, and science is important, and maybe uh, you know a positive way to look at this is also chat. GPT might also like blur the line between native and non-native speakers. I'm not saying that I agree with it, but I think that's like a, a, a vision that might be interesting in the way we look at um, uh, blurring those lines. Because chat GPT, if it skims the general knowledge, will never provide new knowledge, which is supposed to be critical for writing a new book, writing a new article about these new findings at one point. You need I, to provide I think... new contact, new way of thinking. I think here, though, we are like talking about like extreme cases, right? Like mm -hmm. generating a poem from chat GPT three and asking him to write a paragraph for us. But I think it's going to be way more likely that I'm going to write my own paper and then I'm going to feed parts of my paper to to the system and I'm going to ask to rewrite to improve clarity, to rewrite it to fit the style of a certain journal, to rewrite it to just like so the content itself will not change, and we can also check that it's not going to change. But the style and everything else, you can already do it. Um, check for errors without yeah. paying for Grammarly. I don't need to pay for ChatGPT, so it's a balance. <laughs> but I think these are the are the cases where where we are going to talk about these things. Because, for example, if I do it, do I have to declare that I do it? Right. right. Well, some some people already added ChatGPT amongst the authors. Yeah, <laughs> it's a provocation, but. <laughs> But I feel like I don't declare that I use Grammarly. Your example was a very good mm -hmm. example. I, I mean, I use it, but I don't declare it. I think that's a good point. I, I, I And I think it should be required. I, I, for me, uh, I don't think it should be uh, forbidden to use ChatGPT because uh, there are so many cases that it could help, like, especially with a, a fluency in the language. Um, but also um, uh, to summarize uh, ideas, I, because in the end, what we want is to be understood in a paper. So if you can't do it, uh, um, and, and ChatGPT can do it better with the same information, why not? And, and in the end, it's going to be the job of the reviewers to see if the content makes sense. Or you do pay a professional service such as American Journal Expert to rewrite your manuscript. I know people who do that. So, so I'm you have the machine doing it for you. I'm actually curious to also get the opinions of editor here. So I'll give you two extreme <laughs> examples. Uh, let's say that I write my entire paper and uh, I prompt my text and I ask ChatGPT to write an abstract. And Or let's say that I'm writing the abstract by myself and I ask ChatGPT to write a cover letter. And then I just 
use the output without changing it and send it to the editor. They are two different cases, but I'm very curious to see like what, what's what's the what's the take here. I'd be curious to see that. Um, <laughs> I'll be yeah, I'll, I'll be very yeah, because um, there is a lot in the cover letters that cannot be done by machines, which is really convincing the editors that your paper is exciting. Um, I think the cover letter you can bring, I think so. Yeah, too, the yeah. cover letter will work, and then you just change the bit where you say this is novel because. Um, but I, I know someone recently tried it for uh, recommendation letters, for example, and that oh, does nice. not work. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you can give more hints to the, the model and say, oh, I don't like this bit, or it's a little bit too formal or not formal enough. Um, and you can get it to change and maybe to your liking. I don't know if it would, uh, I mean, of course, the, there will be there will be some cases where it's going to be obvious that it's been written by an AI. Um, but I think the critical thing is to say that you used it, uh, and then if the the goal is to judge the content and not the form, the, the the shape of the the article, does it matter that much? I guess. Um... Like to abandon your in your direction, Chris, is like really the job of scientists to know how to write very well with all the bells and whistles, or to really discover something that matters and use any kind of tools they can to diffuse that result. I mean, first we are not taught to write well. Well, you know, our lab, like we really, you know, access you into like writing and the quality of the writing yeah but uh, during I'm, I'm school opening the question. i'm opening the question i mean like is that it should it be the first priority if we can subsidize those skills to a machine we're already uh, um subsidizing a lot of our skills to machines like i don't know how to calculate even a t-test by hand right <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I used to, but I forgot. Yeah, I never even tried. No, no so you're learning that in the psychology. They, they teach you how to do everything. Even the PCA yeah, by hand. Yeah, right. Yeah. PCA yeah. by hand is Actually, do they still do that? Though? Yes. Like in my generation, they, they still made us calculate everything. Oh, and then look it up in the tables at the end of the yes, book, yeah, right? Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah excruciatingly. Wow, this cell is not that old, Steph. You're the same generation. Not as everyone in this discussion. <laughs> no. They still do it. <laughs> they still make us they calculate use, everything by hand. My time, they were using transparent with retro projection. There was not even computers connected to it. Right. I had it, that. It sounds like <laughs> we can all agree that it's a good tool to improve your linguistic skills when you're writing, and it's a good sparing partner to make sure you're not missing anything in the literature. Right. Or going further than yeah. what is known in the literature. Now, what we so far have agreed on is how to check for it, where to draw the line exactly, other than content is one of should be one of the criteria. Um, but one thing that I would like to discuss as well is uh, in terms of 
teaching and examinations. Um, should we switch off the internet and no one is allowed <laughs> to use it? Or should we, are there clever ways of incorporating? So I know a colleague of mine uh, suggested that you put all your exam questions into ChatGPT, get the answer, and then whatever the program comes back with is the baseline for a fail, <laughs> because it gives you the good and the bad and no references. So you have to be better than the program to pass your exam. I completely disagree with that. What are you testing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, but hey, you know, you know what it means? it means? It means you're gonna go to your GP, you're gonna be like, I, I, got, I got this rash on my, on my arm and it's gonna be, Wait a minute, let me ask Chat GPT what this is and how to I can be, To be fair, I think the answer and, and no, no, build no, no, no. 50 That's pounds. That's already happening, Mish. I went to the GP once and he looked it up in Google. <laughs> yeah, but why not? I'm I'm just yeah. saying, you know, this is what it means. If you if this is a bare minimum, this is part of the exam, and like we use it all the time, this is why it's gonna no, be. No, but it's the bare minimum to fail. Like you have to be better than right. that to pass. Mm. But for example, for how often did you answer an exam question with a reference? I think I never did. Never. I used to. Never. <laughs> that means Can you we ask know the bad, right? Yeah. Can well, we ask you just, you just to give a better it. answer? How far can we go with this? You know, you got to be better than Chat GPT. Chat GPT, please give me a better answer than the previous one. Boom. What is the limit to this? <laughs> no, but the thing also is that uh, if you do if you do the default answer, actually, as I understand, Chat GPT, they use they are using some stochastic moments, so they are like. The answers can be varying with uh, every time you ask the same question. So it's not that you will always have the same question. Uh, and uh, they're using like a specific technique that gives you the probability of the most probable word used here. But they are using they are using not the best one that uh, is the highest probability, but a sample of top ten probable answers, and then blindly choosing one of those ten. So it might be every time different answer. So but that's what I mean. So it will give you the first couple of pages of Google search, but it won't give you a detailed, in-depth analysis of it. You could just ask it in another language, right? And then translate yourself. A friend of mine did that with like content creating for websites. Mm -hmm. What's cool about the bicycle-shaped pizza cutter? And I was like, yeah, I'm not spending my time with this job. Ask GPT in Dutch and then translate that to English myself. You can do the same for exam questions. We might need to cut this out of the recording. <laughs> Don't want to get your friend into trouble. <laughs> Don't know who it is. But yeah, I think I think the problem is more about uh, the education, how education is done. Because if a machine can do it, what's the point? Like there are a lot of things that we stop doing because machines are so much better at it than us. But it's not because. Uh, it, it didn't replace something and, and then we didn't do anything instead. It's just in uh, the things that the machine can do better than us, we just leave it to the machine and then we do all the things that we are actually good at it. And for example, the, you cited the problem with the medicine exam. Um, uh, we actually did that uh, in, uh, in the UK as well. Um, and um, we got some uh, uh, results depending on the, the subjects in the medicine exams. Um, and you clearly clearly see that there are some subjects where the, the model is really, really good, even uh, better than the average uh, students. For example, like the legal uh, system with medicine uh, and, and things that are uh, just based on knowledge like just saying what's in the book, essentially. Um, but for the uh, palliative uh, um, and the um, uh, geriatric uh, um, uh, services, the, and the, the questions about that, uh, they were the 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 model was really bad because um, and the hypothesis with that is that um, it doesn't have empathy, it doesn't understand what a human are, uh, what humans are. And it doesn't understand, um, like, uh, if they would require more care or uh, or psychological support or things like that. 
Um, so that's where humans are critical. And it's going to be a long time because, before we can replace these skills with machines. And I think we have to change education to focus on the things humans are good at instead of teaching them to uh, uh, reach the, the abilities of a machine because the machines will be better at these, uh, these skills in the very near future. So what's the point? That's a very good point. I'd like to jump on this to ask what will ChatGPT or who will ChatGPT replace in the future in terms of uh, jobs and, you know, but it's, and it's, people it's, can disappear no more, I don't know. Administration. It's not about replacing. <laughs> that would say. be great. <laughs> It's like we also we we learn to do, use Google really well for our ends. Like my mom is way worse than we are at using Google. So like the challenge is to 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 figure out how we can use it as a tool and how that can be a valuable skill, not what it can replace and what not. I think that's the wrong way to look at it. Right, but Google replaced like uh, the yellow pages and uh, Google replaced encyclopedia. And those are like people that have had a job feeling that encyclopedia. Yeah, but it, it's always been like that. Like uh, it's the same for the industry. The machines, uh, uh, the industrial machines replaced so many jobs. Uh, but that doesn't mean that um, it's a bad thing. It's also jobs oh. that maybe uh, humans shouldn't do if they can avoid I it. Mean, I mean, my, my question is, who will chat GPT replace? I, I think administration, and um, well, I, I see it in the UK, the NHS is pretty bad now, is in a pretty bad situation because they lack so much uh, people and uh, like to get uh, even a GP appointment, it takes two weeks, um, but they are just overloaded. So if you can, you could offload some of, the, uh, uh, of that to uh, a chatbot, that would understand uh, what your problem is and direct you, of course, not take the final decision. That would be dangerous for now. It's We can't do that. But if it could at least direct you, because like, we all we all had this experience going on the websites of the government or mm -hmm. the NHS or whatever, and, and you search for something and you can't find it, uh, you're checking uh, dozens of pages and you can't find exactly what you want. But if ChatGPT or another model could tell you uh, that's what you're looking for even with your because you could ask it with your own words and then it would translate it to the actual uh i don't know legal uh um vocabulary or medical vocabulary and all that could be very valuable press one point so you say you, you wouldn't want it to take the final decision but what about the first decision in a medical scenario so let's assume you call emergency services and for whatever reason we decided it's a good idea to connect you to a machine first um, and then women call describing their symptoms now women's heart attacks we know the statistics have been uh, underdiagnosed because the symptoms differ now if that is the case and you call a machine in the first place that machine might make the error given the data was on, on the data it was trained on, which likely is white male centric. Um, in that case, your initial screening is already going the wrong way. But there is um, already a screening that's happening without even a, a, a model. However, once you identify the problem and you want to adjust it, it is just an update and everybody is updated and not biased. Yeah. That's a good point. So there is a margin, you know, it starts really bad, but, you know, if you want to improve it, it won't be like, oh, unfortunately, you had a heart attack in the countryside where there was this medical doctor that had not been trained to those new signs uh, that, you know, are not part of classical assessment. It would be so a way you're sacrificing one to save many. <laughs> No, right. uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> but but uh, um, uh, in the, the NHS, you have the app. And when you have a problem, I mean, of course, you can call it emergency. And, and in that case, for now, it's it's clear that the mod a model couldn't replace uh, uh, someone at the, uh, that you call at the emergency. But for all the other things, when you go on the uh, NHS app, you you tell the symptoms that you have to the app, and it's just a questionnaire, 
And at the end, it just gives you uh, the best answer that it, it can find. But it's so, so limited. And half of the time, it's going to tell you, oh, you have to call a GP and get an appointment in two or three weeks. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I'm I'm 100% sure that ChatGPT could do better uh, um, if it was trained on medical data, but could do better at uh, advising who you should uh, talk to. Because sometimes you can just talk to a pharmacist, but the NHS is telling you to call a GP. So that's also uh, overloading the GPs even more than they are. Hmm. One thing is sure, ChatGPT will at least make you feel better because it replies in full sentences rather than the current. Time. That's that's also a big point. Uh, that that's super important. You know, in the long series of French did it first. Uh, SNCF, which is our train line, actually have a system in place like this, and are finally terrible. You go on the website, there is no button anymore. You have to ask a question to book your tickets um, and it's just yeah um, i find it highly confusing yeah, but it's because their model is horrible right <laughs> right <laughs> but generally humans humans are visual animals right what michelle just said i want to have my train schedule in front of me and choose the ticket myself instead of asking when is the next train to paris leaving and the right. one after that and maybe the one after i want to just see that layout in front of me i don't i don't I don't want a machine to machine talking some stuff. I just want to present it. But that's a bit like asking your uh, smart speakers, I when don't. is the next train? And I think you're just... the only one who has something like that right now. <laughs> no, I do that too. You do. You. When you want to plan in advance and you say, I need to book my flight to New York uh, in three months from this date to this date, and I want to pass by this place, and I just want one in the morning. <laughs> I find it so much easier just to select in the menu. Yeah, know? but that just goes to show that you have to select a tool for the task at hand. There's no one fixed solution for everything at the moment. No, no, no right, right, right. Yeah, so you're right. So you're right. I, I think uh, chat GPT is impressive, but we shouldn't ask too much. Okay, th- there was a question. I don't Sorry, think I didn't hear. Up. So the question was, can you go around chat GPT or is it just there? I mean, it's there already. Yeah. So is there any chance you can still go around ChatGPT? Because it's already there, it will just get better and better and better. So if you just don't jump on the train, you will be too late. Maybe. Well, correct. And that's why I started my example earlier, which should we just switch off the internet? <laughs> um, people use it and there's a reason people use it. Um, and I think we should come up with clever ways of how it can actually help us get better rather than try to demonize it but there are considerations that need to be taken into account obviously but is it not a general part of using the internet you know my parents don't know how to use google and we don't know exactly how to use the next tool yet but at some point the next generation will figure it out so it's just a time to get adjusted to it and train them now how to use it ethically Correct, but the example I was given with should we switch off the internet was a genuine suggestion by some people in yeah. university settings. Oh, yeah, um, but I mean, that will work. We all know that. Or there will be ways they will figure it out. I also think it's going back to yeah. the question at the beginning, what are you testing? Why? So it, deba- it depends about the tests that you want to do. There are yeah. tests that require maybe some type of like knowledge and then it's classic writing or an oral examination. Again, okay, you then switch it and let them in every point, someone and I'm speaking. Or if it's like more critical thinking, then it's a completely different thing. So you were saying before that Chachi degree could take could be taken as a baseline, right? Mm-hmm. If we assume that we are going to use it, why not let the student critically evaluate the output? So an exam could be yeah, exactly, yeah. instead of like saying that that's the best baseline, you have to just like say, is it good or not? And why? That would be a good exam, for example. Because if we are going to use it, we need to be able to evaluate the output. Especially yeah, that's, are... that's a good idea, actually. You mean you want to use ChatGPT to evaluate the response of the students? Not the other no. way around. Oh. You want the student to evaluate the, the, the output. output. Yeah. Ah, okay. but that, that's, that's a very good idea. Uh, you, you just have to uh, find a way not to have a 50, 50% chance uh, to have, like, 
you don't want a yes and no because otherwise you could have a pretty good answer if you're lucky, a uh, pretty good grade if you're lucky. I see. Well, but that just means we need to ask better questions to ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's what I meant. We we need to. I think evolution, uh, um, uh, education needs to evolve uh, to take into account these new tools. It's like a math. Uh, the the teaching of math uh, evolved with the the calculators that we now all have access to right but will come a day where nobody knows how to do math anymore um if there is any problem with the calculators well, I, don't know, I'm electromagnetic. I don't think so that because do you, whatever. I don't think that's going to happen. What are we going to do? <laughs> like there, there will always be people who are building the calculator. Like, do you need all the children in the world to know how a calculator works? No, you need some basics to understand. It. Because my, my you, you need to do calculation at high school, Chris. You just use the calculator. You didn't do any. I mean, high school. Uh, I started not. Uh, it, we, we didn't have to do a lot of calculations uh, anymore. It was mostly about functions and um, like discrete math and. But you you knew how to solve a function, right? You yeah. just didn't use it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Generation. <laughs> um, um, I guess Anna could be. <laughs> I don't know if she's still here, but yeah, I mean, uh, I've seen my brothers, they're am, younger I, than I'm me. And... Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. I mean, my brothers are way younger than me and like people are still teaching math at school. It's just how you solve then how you solve the problem that it has changed, but still you need to, to learn the, the basics. And I, I guess it will be the Good same night. here. But I mean, then the right. question is, what are the basics? If we keep evolving and we keep adding tools, at some point you need to draw the line somewhere because you only have, depending on the country, between 12 to 13 years max to teach all the basics. But as, as, as calculation, you still need to feed the tools first. So you still need to be able to know what the tool does. And to know that, you still need to know the theory, right? Yeah, yeah, the theory, you, you need it. Um, but but uh, I'm sure that our parents and their parents, I'm sure that they learned to uh, calculate much uh, uh, bigger multiplications and divisions. Um, and, and, and now, do you really, you, you need to know how it works. So if you were uh, if you needed it and you don't have a calculator you can do it it's going to take time um but 99.9% .9 of the time you're just going to use the calculator but what you need is the same thing as what we would need with chat gpt is a critical evaluation of the result of the machine exactly how do you do critical evaluation if you don't know the basics but if you know the theory but you don't yeah. have to know how to do the multiplication of 1 billion, whatever, times 1 billion. Um, you don't have to do that, but you have to know how to. Yeah. Like it's, uh, it's faster with a calculator, but you still should know how to do it. Yeah, but that's the only thing that you need to know and not the other, like it, it will remove some uh, superficial things that we don't need anymore because errors. the machine can do yeah. it. Yes, yeah, it will remove errors given how by the, the way we compute. How far can we go in that direction, you know, to end up in a dystopian reality where technically we completely lost the know-how of everything and rely only on machines? You're thinking of idiocracy. Mm. Yeah. But, <laughs> but also, Chris, there's, a difference, <laughs> there's a difference between theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge. Right. It's good and well to know in theory how to cycle a bike. But if you're in front of it, you still don't know what to do because you lack the balance. And to be honest, I have no clue right now how I'm able to talk to you guys. I mean, I'm using this Zoom thing. So I feel like across the line where we're understanding the actual processes of all the um, yeah, machinery we use like long time ago. And I just like throughout this whole conversation, I keep thinking of my grandma who for whom we are working in a utopia, right? So for me, 
whatever we're projecting GPT uh, is capable of doing on what we're afraid of, just to be the negative part here, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's coming true. So I feel like we crossed that line far like long ago where we're still understanding the steps and it's a very big risk, but I do think it's inevitable. Right. And, and is it, is it, isn't it like uh, when machinery came that people were afraid of what it could do as well because they didn't understand it. So isn't that the phase that we are in right now with chat GPT? Right, but we're getting closer to not having the critical thinking of what comes out of the machine. I'll give you an example. Uh, you put your dish in your dishwasher, and if the dish is coming out dirty, you'll be this is a bad dishwasher, it didn't do its job. Um, the other extreme <laughs> is that you absolutely deny that the dish is dirty and to you because it went through the dishwasher now this dish is clean and there is no other way for a dish to be clean than being like this. And and we just went through well. this today. <laughs> so well. the solution was put it back in the dishwasher for a second round, still wasn't clear and you just did it by hand. Or you just accept that it's not perfectly clean and you put it no. back into your car. <laughs> right, right. But if you if you like have to allow wise or critical thinking, then you're going to believe everything the machine does without even putting it a second time. That's a danger, I think. I, I, I So in my opinion, that's not the danger of uh, chat GPT and... Uh, I think I think it happens uh, with uh, as uh, uh, Danny said. I think uh, uh, it happened with a lot of technology technological advances. Like even uh, the um, uh, when people started printing books, um, there were criticism about it. And then uh, when TV arrived, of course, there was a lot of criti uh, criticism about. Uh, so it happens all the time in history. I think the the, the real problem with uh, the the models uh, are the ethical problems. So how they are created, how they are trained, who is curating the data. Um, uh, also, you have a lot of uh, copyright issues. Uh, a little bit. I, I mean, even with ChatGPT, there are probably some uh, 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 copyright issues. But there was a lot of. Uh, uh, copyright issues with uh, DALI and all the the diffusion uh, models, um, and and these these are problems that we should solve before we can't, because uh, if all the models are trained with uh, with the, by these companies who uh, who have access to all our data and um, and we can't do anything about it if there is no regulation. Uh, they're gonna start taking off with their crazy models doing everything, and who's gonna stop stop them? One way to stop it, it finds this ultimate request for ChatGPT. We will break ChatGPT because it will recursively ask ChatGPT to check every information that it can have without finding the solution. Do you ever think about this, or do you have any idea how to do that? I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of uh, 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 safety measures against that. Also, it doesn't even check a, a real uh, database, I think, because uh, as it's been said, it can't cite sources. But there must be a way to crash a system if she asks the right question. I doubt it. I crash the IP system just with three lines of code, so I feel like That's this different. must be possible. <laughs> Try 42. Yeah. I have a question concerning, um, because I haven't really read much about it, how much of a like monopoly the current uh, GPT is. So how many competing ones are out there that they could kind of counter-regulate each other? There is a Google Lambda. And uh, of course, since ChatGPT uh, got released and uh, it was such, uh, had such popularity, uh, they also pushed their own uh, tool. I don't remember how they called it. So it's using the Lambda uh, model, but they put it into a chat bot uh, thingy. I think um, there was also something with uh, Microsoft. There's um, Microsoft, big... Google, and Meta. They're all releasing their own yeah. version. But do okay. you see this as a possibility for it, uh, yeah, for all of them to keep improving and hopefully also, also getting more ethical, each of them? I, I doubt that they're going to be more ethical if there is no regulation about it. 
the ethical implications, Chris, you just said it that that we just just tackle them. Oh, sorry. Uh, tackle them as they arise and that people have to with television as well but like when whenever I'm, I'm I'm reading some I don't know literature from the time when televisions were invented I actually just yesterday did um, people went crazy right it's like cinema at home people didn't care like the, the general public didn't care about the ethics at all you could just have cinema at home and that was great and the ethical implications like now we're really aware of them so do you don't you think that we're maybe like for now searching a little bit the, the needle in the haystack and we'll just be aware of the ethical actual ethical implications and dangers like once it's mainstream adopted do you think we can say that that like okay we, we have to think about that really hard now what could be the problem with it in 10 years from now is that I don't know. Is it a like, good thing to be a bit critical right now? I don't know. Oh yeah, okay. Of course, it is. I'm, 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 I'm not saying that, but we like. I think, I think you're right. We we've been notoriously terrible at being critical of like new technology and how it. it no, no, no. Of course, but... we've not been good at it historically since forever. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's that's why uh, I, I think I think scientists have. Uh, a, a big impact on um, that th they can push regulations, and I mean we've we've seen it with the global warming and and the pandemic, and uh, I, even though like, some people are criticizing the scientists and all, but uh, I mean not all scientists are perfect, of course. Um, but uh, we have a voice, uh, um, and, and I mean the the scientists studying a specific question, they are the expert of the question. So who else would you ask about that? But there's been, uh, um, I think scientists have been pretty quiet about the ethics mm -hmm. of algorithms and machine learning. Um, and, and I think it's becoming a problem. But also if they're not, like if they're not quiet about that, like often also public doesn't, really listen right to start with the, with the nuclear bomb for example that would be horrible I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it, you 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 need a consensus uh, scientific consensus to uh start having an impact on the the public opinion if it's just a, a scientist i mean we've seen it with the covid there was a paper in uh, 2014 uh calling the pandemic saying that th there will be a pandemic in in uh, a very recent future and that happened so uh, a group of scientists said it, no one cared. Okay, I, didn't, I don't know about the paper. Uh, thanks for, in the, in the chat, uh, we just got a link. Uh, you may have heard about this from a few years ago, entering uh, identical heart symptoms for women men on the Babylon app resulted in different diagnoses. We actually, before you joined us, then we actually discussed this and our, I made exactly the same <laughs> point earlier. So thanks for uh, providing a uh, reference for it. I have one left uh, over <laughs> thought. So I'm still thinking about the calculators and the basics <laughs> and all these things. Uh, well, I think it's not only basics. Uh, we still have to learn where we have to continue and the way we're continuing because in the end of the day, the chat GPT is uh, trained based on the papers that you are writing. So if no one is writing anything, ChatGPT is not developing and we're stuck. But then if ChatGPT writes your own papers, doesn't it? Yeah, it will. It will like uh, we're going in circles. Yeah, so it will never be. So for example, right now, I think the, the database is till 2021 or 2022. So if there is some breakthrough in, I don't know, in tractography, let's say, and you are... <laughs> no bias. One thing that changes the world. <laughs> well, the, the danger is we're going to uh, an inflation of the number of papers, but, you know, it'd be not more message or no more value to those new papers if they if they were written only by chat GPT. So you can... Uh, quantity of a quantity. There will be... Yeah, but how can you write then a paper uh, more than chat GPT if you just know basics? So, well, it means mm -hmm. we have to go really deep still. We should not, like, take away all the, you know, university studies, like, let's say, well, anyways, chat GPT will do that. Yeah, it will do that, but then 
there will be no further evolution if we always use ChatGPT to write our papers. And but I think, as Michelle mentioned earlier, and, and I tried it myself, it's it's a good way of having a first pass yeah, to see what's out right. there. But then you still have to do the good old yeah. reference search, dig mm. the archives, yeah. look at the yeah. libraries, yeah. look at the old books, and take it a step further. Yeah, so that will not be possible with mm. in-depth uh, mm. uh, studying of subject so that's the thing like the first step is sometimes the hardest so once you have a yeah. rough draft everything else is i don't want to say easier but i think it gets you across the line mm -hmm. to really dig deeper yeah. you don't you don't have to stare at a blank page basically that's the right? exactly yeah. that's the scariest part yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what i meant at the beginning <laughs> with, with it can serve as a sparing partner so you can say i have roughly this idea or i want to write about this in this paragraph and then you go to a software tool and say, okay, help me. And it fills in the blanks and then you can work off it rather than sit there and just wait for inspiration. But don't you just have to do like a rethink on exactly that for the teaching part, for the students that you yeah. give them the rough draft with ChatGPT and then they have to add on it somehow. Well, that, that was what I meant in the beginning yeah. that whatever ChatGPT gives you is the baseline, but it lacks the synergy and the depth so that will be the next step of doing it. Or as Giacomo said, you can give it a text written by the tool and ask them to discuss and critique. I think that's a little bit overestimating the uh, abilities of uh, ChatGPT because ChatGPT can uh, help with the, the form of your text. Um, but if the ideas are not there, it's, it's going to make up things, but it's going to be um, nonsense <laughs> most of it like if it's something specific if you ask something about a tractography or or the disconnectum try to make something new with the disconnectum i actually tried it uh and and it's going to make up like crazy things um it, it, because if you didn't give the actual idea it won't um it won't have uh, a new idea to connect things that it doesn't even know in the end. So, so you still need to provide the content. You still need to run your analysis. You still need to provide the references. So the only thing that ChatGPT can do for a scientific paper, I think, is to help you write the paper. So you, the uh, uh, blank page, uh, uh, so if you want to start writing, you could just uh, write a bunch of bullet points uh, and it might help you uh, create a, a text. It's it, it's definitely not going to be perfect, uh, but it, it might give you a, a little kickstart. But Perhaps. I don't think it's going to create ideas. But we should. Well, no. But let's let's take the teaching example again. So if you have undergraduate students, they don't need to generate ideas in their exams. They usually need to repeat and rephrase the knowledge that you offered at some point to them. So that generation of ideas comes from writing papers and at later stages, but how can we avoid that? It's just a, a paper writing or essay writing tool in that case. But, or should uh, we avoid it? <laughs> but uh, as, uh, as Chris has been highlighting, this is uh, maybe the beginning of a transformation that we, where we don't ask you to spit out learn knowledge, but actually focus on something exactly. that is unique to human, which is so far creativity. Exactly. But the, like we, I think we came to this point a couple of times that the software can give you the pros and the cons of an argument, but the synthesis has to come from you. And that is based on advanced knowledge that you can't get from the software at the moment, but that might quickly change as well. True. I, I am not completely sure though, because I'm like thinking about also the, when we conclude the first session, when you like, uh, we, we made two points, right? Mm -hmm. One that we could use these for form and the other one that we could use these for like generating some sort of like basic literature that can inform the draft. But this second point that we are still discussing over here, I, I'm not completely sure whether it's something that we should already give it like almost for granted in, yeah. in, in like the way we plan to use it. Because if you are the expert, if you are the one that like, I'm not sure whether this 
output that you generate will almost create a sort of illusion of like knowing what you should know as a basic mm -hmm. step. And it precludes with a gigantic bias that is behind the training set, what you could have as a starting point in your own investigation. So if, if it's for a student, someone that is outside of like the people that are working on that specific sector, it works very well. But for other people that are working with it, I think it's more as also we were discussing, it's more for like many, many things on, on, on like form more than content. Correct. Yeah. Also, the, the model doesn't know anything, right? It just gives you an elaborate answer to the question you, you ask sample from the internet, doesn't it? Don't have any yeah. kind of knowledge in this way. You get what you want because you feed it with already your knowledge, right? Well, it gives you a snapshot of the current knowledge. The current that's state out there. What's out yeah. there. Yeah. It, no. doesn't, it doesn't generate ideas. No. But that's often not what you need from it. So if True. you. But you write a review paper, you just ask for, okay, what is actually out there? So you use yeah, it as a sparring partner right? in a sense, exactly, it's a snapshot. But it means that it's a snapshot something. And like... But that's where you as the expert come in. So if it gives you a snapshot, you can make sure that you don't forget anything obvious that you may have not thought about. But then you have to take it to the next level by adding the depth to it and the synergy. I mean, for, for me, for now, I don't know why I'm, I still see it like, because we're focusing on like this text generation mm -hmm. and this power of chat degree, but like it can be used like in different ways that are always released to form. Like, for example, there are extension already right now in our studio, ChatGPT Studio, and you can ask ChatGPT to comment your code. Correct. That's a way that would be like, I feel that that's properly like, I mean, you have 1,000 lines of code that you have to comment, and then maybe it comments it automatically, and then you go through everything, and it's or like generate code to have like a sort of like. My student used it to understand the code that he didn't yeah. get, so it's just like explain what is there. So I feel that these things are like more close to what I actually would like to use than ask a questions about a topic, and then like use it as a. Yeah. But again, it's, it's fundamentally, it's the same principle. You feed it some kind of question to get an answer. So in your case, you feed it a code or an example of a code, mm -hmm. and you want an explanation of what you're seeing, which is similar to when you give an essay question, for example, and you want an explanation of what are the parts in, in the essay question. But the next level will be the integration and going deeper, and that is something that currently can't really do. But does it not also depend on the level of the question? I mean, the simpler your question, the simpler the answer will be, but the more detail you put in your question, the more detail will detail be the output. So I think like if you have an essay question, it will be already like preempted with like what you want to hear. So I think that makes it easier for the students to kind of like put it in and come out with an answer that has the depth of it. But I think if you just like are blank and just ask it something simple, it will give you something simple back. So I think maybe if we don't, if they have to come up themselves with the right question to ask, they already have to think about the content they want to hear. I think in education, I uh, we also have to think of different ways to use it or to avoid using it depending on the field because uh to learn uh yeah history history you can't really have i mean when you're learning that at school you can't really have new ideas about it you just need to learn uh so of course, if you allow a chat GPT uh, or even a model that would be trained specifically to know history, um, that would be literally cheating. If you want your uh, students to know the whole history by heart, uh, that I think could be questionable because if it's available on the internet or on Wikipedia or whatever, um, do you really need to learn all the data and all? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess there is some basic knowledge that we would need. But when you look at the how, how history is, is taught in different countries, you also see that there is a, a lot of um, there is no consensus on what should be uh, taught to the to the kids. Uh, but for other uh, other domains. Um, where you need actual reasoning, 
um, you could still use ChatGPT to make, I don't know, text better, or you could even allow it and it would, it would not even help. At university, I had several exams where we had access to Google. Uh, we had our, uh, our computers. I mean, when you're learning how to code, you can't really do without Google. You can't learn everything from a language, a programming language. Uh, by heart that's not possible that's, that's not even useful and I would add that also part of learning to program I think it's learning to do the right question what you were saying before like how to look in the forums and what is gonna work with your code as well that you already have an integrated so I think that's part of the learning the right yeah. questions that's and also you need, you need to know when chat GPT is screwing up your code because it doesn't always give uh, a code that's working. So uh, I'm aware of time. So I think at this point we can conclude that it's great to improve your form, your writing, get a snapshot of the knowledge that's out there. But in terms of innovation, synergy, new ideas, we're still waiting for it to improve or come up and with ethics. better ways. <laughs> ethics yes um well thank you thank you so much for joining the first cns night cup happy to continue the discussion as well um but we should stop the recording to stick to the time limit that we set ourselves um if you want to do this again just suggest topics and i'm happy to have another round of discussion with you thank you thanks there thank you Thank you.